So as she said, my name is Anna Fry, and I'm from Lloyd College. And I studied abroad in Moscow, Russia in the fall of 2008 on Lloyd's exchange program with the Russian State University for the Humanities. And as part of that program, we took a distance learning course with a professor from Beloit, Donna Oliver, entitled Cities in Transition. And as part of this program, we all took, um, we studied Moscow's history and growth and development uh, throughout its history and also the ways in which the past played a role in the present and the ways that you can see um, past culture. And we had to do an independent observational and research project on any topic that we wanted and I chose to do it on the metro system. And I had been to Russia before in high school as a tourist, and we went on a tour of the metro, and I was really impressed by the beauty of its stations, which you can see here, and just the, the efficiency of the trains. They come every 90 seconds during rush hour, and just the sheer number of people that use it. But when I lived there as a resident for four months, I really started to, I was drawn in by the advertisements that I saw, and they were an integral part of every trip, because you see them everywhere, and in the lobby, and the escalators inside the trains themselves. And uh, Olymp here, their slogan is all advertisements in the metro. And they have a monopoly on all the advertisement spaces until 2011. And that is a big deal because there are 12 lines, 177 stations, and in total over 400,000 advertisements. And the metro serves four and a half to nine million people a day, which makes it second only to Tokyo. And so this is an incredible advertising opportunity, and I was really interested in the ways in which it was utilized. Um, and for my project, I focused mainly on the billboards that line all of the escalators, because these are the ones that really attract the most attention, because people are looking at them the entire time they ride the escalators. Okay, and this is the billboard that first got, you know, caught my attention as I was riding it. And this one hangs in pretty much every station in some place or another, and I was really curious because it doesn't appear to be selling a product or representing any sort of company, it's just there, saying so give women flowers. So I was <laughs> curious what it was all about and if there were any others like it. Um, and I found actually a whole genre of advertising, which I termed social commentary advertisements. And these, these are advertisements which, rather than selling a product, send a message to society. And really, by looking at the themes represented, you can see what values are important. And so um, the major theme that I noticed when I was there is family. So here's an example, um, family from Trochu Dolls. It's really showing how important the family is for the country itself. They had another ad that said, um, family is the masterpiece of nature. And also another family-themed advertisement was one um, stressing that the importance of having a lot of children, because right now Russia has a demographics crisis, and especially among ethnic Russian population. So that's really a stress currently. Um, and then they also had as a series of advertisements like this, um, really targeting, targeting um, drug abuse among young people and trying to make a difference. And this leads into the next category that I found that was really interesting. And these are uh, advertisements that rather than just reflecting social issues, also try to uh, play an active role in you know, combat the problems. And so, for example, there used to be ads advertising vodka and other uh, alcoholic beverages in the metro. Um, but on March 31st, 2008, Olymp, the company that controls all these advertisements, announced that they would remove all advertisements of alcohol from the metro starting May 1st. And then on April 2nd, 2008, the State Duma, which is the lower house of the Russian legislature, um, met to discuss the advertisement of alcohol and tobacco products in public transportation in general. And the previous law on advertisement stated that, or it banned the advertisement of alcohol and tobacco products from the outside of trains and buses and trams, but it didn't say anything about the advertisements within the um, actual trains, buses, or uh, within the stations themselves. And so the new proposal that they meant to discuss, um, it, proposed banning the advertisement of alcohol and tobacco products from all, all facets of public transportation. And this was really meant to uh, target the widespread problems of underage uh, alcohol and drug abuse, as well as the low life expectancy of Russian, especially Russian men, which is linked to alcoholism. And they actually went a step further, not just banning the advertisements, but also putting up 
um, ads against alcohol and, and tobacco use. And so this one you can see, it's really targeting individuals and men because that's the biggest issue right now. But um, in targeting physical issues like hang having a hangover and also, you know, just shame. You know, you don't want to do something that you'll regret later. And for anti-smoking ads, these were interesting because they seem to target more young people, especially women. And so you can see they're targeting the idea of peer pressure and fashion because right now, in the recent years, there's been an upsurge in the number of young people that smoke, especially women, which didn't exist in previous years. And they're really trying to combat that. And these would hung, these hung in every metro station I saw. As you can see, these are right next to each other. The one with the woman in the dress, I would usually see four times per station. Um, and then when I came back, I was really interested to see where these, uh, com where these issues may have come from and if it's a new phenomenon or if it's somehow related to the Soviet propaganda posters. And I found some definite similarities. So here's one, you know, really emphasizing the importance of family and children for the country and its future. And also, here's one that's very similar to the advertisement that I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Except this one has a little bit more of the societal implications. Um, <laughs> they also had um, anti-smoking advertisements, as you can see, rather than targeting um, you know, social pressures, they really focus on the health or health effects and uh, harmful work, or harming your work. Uh, okay, so really quick, just to wrap up, um, I mentioned that when I came back, you know, I was really interested in these propaganda posters and how they might relate to the current issues. So I took a class on communist and post-communist systems, and for that, I um, researched propaganda posters in the Soviet Union, Hungary, and China and from a political science perspective and seeing how these visual things are related to the politics of the moment. And for my honors project this semester for my Russian degree, um, I looked at, we have a collection in the Bully College's Wright Museum of Art of, so of Soviet propaganda posters. And so I looked through those, I created an exhibit and I um, currently write a collection catalog looking at the themes and the imagery in these posters. And next year, I'm going to Russia, back to Russia on a Fulbright teaching grant. And so I'm going to teach English, but also I'm going to do a side project looking at some of these ideas of, um, you know, how people relate to the Soviet Union, how they relate to their past, and what they feel about propaganda, and if it is coming back, and what the situation is outside of Moscow. So, yeah. Thank you very much.